Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown and AW Rampage review. SmackDown tonight was from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky, while Rampage was taped from the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. And SmackDown tonight, you know, plans were changed uh, for SmackDown because of, you know, Bray Wyatt passing away and... They did a tribute tonight for uh, Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk. You know, Terry Funk passed away on Wednesday. And Bray Wyatt, of course, passed away uh, yesterday. So tonight, it wasn't all about uh, the wrestling on the show. It was basically, you know, paying tribute to both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. But tonight on SmackDown... We had Rey Mysterio versus Grayson Waller. The women's championship was on the line where EO Sky defended the title against Zelina Vega. We had a Terry Funk hardcore tag team match. The Street Profits versus Butch and Ridge Holland. And the main event, L.A. Knight, yeah, took on Finn Balor. But as a whole for SmackDown tonight, I thought it was just a very meh show, in my opinion. Like I said, it wasn't about the wrestling tonight. It was paying tribute to uh, both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. That's all that mattered. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown opened up tonight, and we saw the roster on the stage. You know, you saw Triple H also there, uh, front and center. And we saw also Eric Rowan on the stage, too. Of course, Eric Rowan, you know, he was part of the Wyatt family. You know, he was there tonight, and he was also there, you know, at AW for... Uh, Brody Lee. So, Michael Cole welcomed us to the show. He stated that this week we lost two beloved members of the WWE family WWE Hall of Famer Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. Michael Cole ended up saying that tonight they will honor their legacy and lives. So we had a 10-bell salute for uh, both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. So we got that. And we also had a video package that was paying tribute to Bray Wyatt after the 10-bell salute. And this was a very well-done, put-together video package honoring uh, Bray Wyatt, you know, showcasing, you know, him as part of the Wyatt family and also went into, you know, the Firefly Funhouse and, you know, The Fiend. So, but very good, well done video package it was uh, that they did. So then as the video package ended, we went back into the arena, fans were chanting, Thank you, Bray. And they were singing, He's got the whole world in his hands. So that was uh, very nice. And then the lights uh, went out in the arena. And we saw Bray's rocking chair stand in front of the superstars and the spotlight was on uh, the chair and it just zoomed in, you know, on the chair. But great tribute this was, paying respect to Bray Wyatt. This, this was very uh, well done. And then we had the first match of the night after SmackDown came back from the commercial. We had Rey Mysterio. Versus Grayson Waller. 
And this was an okay match here. Match got on the way. We had uh, Rey Mysterio end up taking Grayson Waller down with an arm drag. Rey end up grabbing Grayson Waller, but Grayson Waller end up locking Rey in a headlock. Rey then threw Waller to the ropes. Waller then knocked Rey down with a shoulder tackle. Waller then locked in the headlock, but Rey ended up throwing Waller to the ropes. And Rey delivered a Hesus a takedown to Waller. Ray then delivered some right hands onto Waller in the corner, and he tripped uh, Waller up on the second rope. Ray ended up going for the 619. Waller moved out of the way. Waller then threw Ray onto the ring apron and knocked him to the outside. Waller then slided to the outside of the ring, and Ray threw Waller into the barricade, and then SmackDown, you know, went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Waller was shown climbing the second rope. He walked the ropes and he landed an elbow drop to Ray. Waller ended up going for the cover. Ray kicked out. We had Waller end up throwing Ray to the ropes. He ended up knocking him down with a leg to his chest. So Waller ended up going for the cover, but Ray ended up kicking out again. So Waller ended up grabbing Ray. He ended up going for a power bomb, but Ray ended up hitting uh, back with some right hands to Waller. And he ended up throwing Waller's shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Ray then climbed the top rope. He landed a sit-down senton to Waller. Ray then delivered a springboard crossbody off the second rope to Waller. Ray then ended up going to the ropes and hit a tornado DT onto Waller. Ray ended up going for the cover and Waller ended up kicking out. Ray then ran towards Waller. But Waller ended up delivering a kick to Ray's face and he slammed Ray onto the mat. He ended up going for the cover and Ray ended up kicking out. So we had Waller end up going to the ropes, but Ray ended up hitting him with a clothesline, which was followed by a splash. Ray tripped Waller onto the second rope. And then Austin Theory's music ended up hitting. Theory then ended up walking down. He tried to distract Ray. As Waller ended up rolling Ray up, but Ray ended up kicking out. So both guys end up delivering double cross bodies. And Santos Escobar ran down. And he attacked Theory from behind. Theory ended up throwing Santos into the barricade. And Theory ended up attacking Santos's leg. Ray then delivered a baseball slide onto Theory on the outside. Wall then rolled to the outside and landed a clothesline to Ray. Wall then threw Ray back to the ring and he ended up hitting Escobar with a right hand. Waller then jumped into the ring and Ray ended up hitting a Hurricanrana to Waller. He ended up getting Waller on the second rope. Ray then landed the 619 to Waller. Ray then was on the ring apron as Theory grabbed Ray's leg and Escobar ended up super kicking Theory. Ray delivers a splash onto Waller. He ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Ray Mysterio ended up winning the match. Overall, the match itself was okay, in my opinion. And then we heard uh, Bray Wyatt's voice asking if he wanted to hear something very scary. And we had, you know, Fireflies, you know, being played. And, you know, that was that. And then we saw Caleb Braxton. Caleb Braxton was backstage with damage control. Bailey ended up cutting Caleb Braxton off as Caleb Braxton was going to ask about Zelina Vega. And Bailey ended up telling Caleb Braxton that she could be a, she could be a good fit for the LWO. As she hears, they only hire short people. Bailey ended up telling Caleb Braxton that Zelina's wins against EO were flukes because EO is a once in a lifetime generational talent. Bailey ended up saying that EO is a former NXT, former women's tag team champion, Money in the Bank winner, and current WWE women's champion. So pretty much that was what you know Bailey had to say. And then we saw a graphic show in shots of uh, Bray Wyatt's debut when he was The Fiend. You know, The Fiend is one of my favorite Bray Wyatt characters. You know, it was a very 
you know, hot seller for WWE for merchandise. They didn't even know how big uh, the Fiend character uh, was going to be. But we all know what happened later on. They ruined the Fiend after uh, the Hell in a Cell match between, you know, the Fiend and Seth Rollins, where stupid disqualification uh, was, you know, called in the Hell in a Cell match, which was stupid. And then, you know, the Fiend being buried by Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. Just terrible how WWE ruined the Fiend later on. But still, the Fiend, like I said, it's going to be one of my favorite Bray Wyatt characters. And then we had EO Sky versus Zelina Vega. This was for the Women's Championship. This was just a very meh match, in my opinion. Match got on the way. Zelina Vega locked in an arm bar on EO, but EO ended up getting out of uh, the arm bar. She ended up getting Zelina in a headlock. EO ended up going for a hip toss, but Zelina ended up reversing it. She ended up slamming EO onto the mat. Bailey then distracted Zelina, and EO ended up slamming uh, Zelina onto the mat. EO then started stomping on Zelina as she ended up picking her up and slammed her onto the mat. So EO ended up going for the cover, and Zelina ended up kicking out. So EO delivered a forearm to Zelina's face. She ended up going for a power slam to Zelina, but Zelina landed on her feet. Zelina then rolled uh, EO up, but EO ended up kicking out. Zelina then climbed the second rope, but EO delivered a right hand, and she ended up slamming her onto the mat. EO ended up going for the cover, and Zelina ended up kicking out. So EO ended up running towards Zelina, but Zelina moved out of the way, and she ended up landing the clothesline to EO. Zelina then locked in a hammerlock, and then she ended up delivering a leg sweep DDT to EO. Zelina then climbed the second rope and landed the Meteor onto EO. She went for the cover, and EO ended up kicking out. So, at the end of the match, we had EO end up throwing Zelina into the ring, because, you know, on the outside, uh, Zelina went to the outside, she grabbed EO, and EO threw her into the ring steps. So, uh, EO threw Zelina into the ring. She ended up hitting Zelina with the double knees to her face. EO then climbed the top rope, and she ended up landing the moonsault onto Zelina. She ended up going for the cover, and there you go. EO Sky ended up winning the match, retaining the Women's Championship. Overall, very meh match this was. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes ended up making his way down to the ring. Of course, we got a whoa twice tonight. So the fans ended up chanting Cody. So Cody ended up telling the crowd that he knows what he wants to talk about. He ended up saying one time at 11 years old, he was at the airport traveling with his father, Dusty Rhodes. He kept saying that he heard a man yelling the most peculiar insult. He heard a man calling his father an egg-sucking dog. So Cody Rhodes was like to Michael Cole, Oh, can we say egg-sucking dog on Fox? So he kept saying choice words for his grandmother. He kept saying that he couldn't see the man yelling, but he assumed there was going to be a domestic incident. And then he saw him. It was Terry Funk. So the fans were chanting Terry as uh, Terry Funk's graphic was shown on the Titan Tron. Cody up saying that they get to say they are WWE superstars. And over the years, they have been called other things. They've been called wrestlers, athletes, artists, competitors, some carnies. But there is a fabled few who earned the right to call themselves Cowboys. He ended up saying both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt were Cowboys in the best of ways. Cody ended up saying that he had the privilege to talk about Terry Funk and that he wore the 10 pounds of gold and went to West 
Texas State. You have seen that Terry Funk has been a constant in pro wrestling and sports entertainment for 50 years. And for 50 years, Funk has consistently been changing. He ended up saying that there is a little thing called the rub. Cody then ended up saying that when someone with such a legacy and quiddity steps in the ring with someone who doesn't have it. He ended up saying that it lifts them up and does it. So Cody ended up saying that Terry Funk did that for an entire company movement and revolution. So then we look at Terry Funk's you know, career, and then, you know, him being inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, he had interviews, you know, with Mick Foley there. So then, after uh, the video package for Terry Funk, which, you know, was a good uh, video package, you know, for Terry Funk, another very well done, you know, video package showcasing his career. So then we saw Cody end up saying that, from Texas to Tokyo, Terry Funk was passionate. He ended up saying that he is glad he has been given the authority to say that the next tag team match is a Terry Funk hardcore match. So then Al came the Brawling Brutes, Ridge Holland, and Butch, and then SmackDown went to commercial. But I thought, you know, it was a good segment with Cody here, just, you know, paying tribute to Terry Funk, saying about how, you know, he was at the airport traveling with his father, the late great Dusty Rhodes, and he heard a man yelling the most uh, peculiar insult to, you know, his father. But good tribute it was, you know, that Cody did for, T for Terry Funk. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the Terry Funk hardcore tag team match, Rich Holland and Butch versus the Street Profits. This was a okay match here, but calling it a Terry Funk hardcore tag team match, there was nothing hardcore in this match. There was no chairs being used, no kendo sticks. All that was used was just a table, and that was later on in the match. So, calling it a... Hardcore tag team match, you know, with it being hardcore, you know, it wasn't hardcore. So the match got on the way. We had all four men fight on the outside of the ring. Butch ended up twisting Montez's, Montez Ford's ear as Dawkins ended up throwing uh, Rich Holland into the ring steps. Butch then threw Ford back into the ring and threw him to the ropes. But Ford ended up hitting Butch with a shoulder tackle. Ford then end up going to the ropes, and Butch delivered a drop kick to Ford. Dawkins got on the ring apron. Butch ended up hitting Dawkins with a drop kick. Butch then twist uh, Montez Ford's leg as Dawkins got into the ring. He ended up throwing Butch to the outside. In came Rich Holland, who ended up throwing Dawkins to the outside. Rich Holland then delivered a DDT onto Ford as Dawkins got into the ring. He ended up hitting Butch from behind. So the Street Profits end up double teaming on Rich Holland. Butch got back into the ring. He had pinned Dawkins with a chop to his chest. Ford then delivered some chops onto Butch. And so uh, the Street Profits end up double teaming on Butch. The Street Profits then double teamed on uh, you know, Rich Holland in the corner. Butch then climbed the top rope. He had to land a moonsault onto both uh, Ford and Dawkins. Rich Holland then ended up lifting Butch on his shoulders, and he ended up spinning him, knocking down uh, the Street Profits. Dawkins was on the outside as Rich Holland ended up knocking Dawkins down. Rich ended up going for a power bomb, but Dawkins ended up delivering a back body drop to Rich Holland. Montez Ford was on the outside, he ended up knocking uh, you know, Rich Holland down. Ford then delivered a splash onto the outside, knocking down uh, both. Uh, Rich Holland and Butch. So then Bobby Lashley's music ended up hitting. Bobby Lashley came out, you know, he was wearing glasses and a nice, you know, white suit. So as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had uh, Rich Holland and Butch end up double teaming on Montez Ford in the ring. 
Butch ended up going for the cover, and Ford ended up kicking out. So Butch went to the outside. Dawkins delivered a show of tackle, knocking Butch down. Dawkins got into the ring, and he delivered a spinning elbow onto Rich Holland. Dawkins then placed Holland on his shoulders, and Ford delivered a blockbuster. So we had uh, Dawkins end up going for the cover, and Butch broke up the pin. Butch then delivered some kicks onto Dawkins as Montez Ford ended up kicking Butch in the face. So Rich Holland then delivered a clothesline, and all four guys were down. Dawkins then climbed the top rope, but Rich Holland delivered a right hand to Dawkins. You had uh, Butch on the outside of the ring. He ended up grabbing a table from under the ring, and it accidentally hit Bobby Lashley, who was at ringside. So Butch ended up getting the table in the ring. Montez Ford ended up knocking Rich Holland down. Butch ended up getting on the ring apron. Montez Ford ended up grabbing Rich Holland, but Rich Holland blocked uh, Montez Ford. He ended up getting Ford on his shoulders, and he ended up hitting Dawkins with a DDT as he ended up slamming Montez Ford. Rich Holland ended up placing Dawkins on the table as Butch ended up climbing the top rope. But Bobby Lashley ended up pushing Butch down. He ended up hitting Butch with a spear. So the Street Profits end up landing the uh, revelation and ended up slamming Rich Holland through the table. So Montez Ford ended up going for the cover. And there you go. The Street Profits ended up winning the match. Overall, this was just an okay match, but it was no hardcore match, in my opinion. This was only just to pay, you know, respect, you know, for Terry Funk because Terry Funk, you know, is a hardcore legend. But like I said, there was nothing hardcore about this match. And then we saw a clip of The Miz. The Miz was doing an interview with TMZ Sports. He ended up saying that if LA Knight continues like this, LA Knight won't make it to WrestleMania. So then out came LA Knight. Yeah! So LA Knight uh, got into the ring and he got on the mic. He ended up saying that he will get to the Miz in a second. But what he can tell tonight is about Bray Wyatt. You know what I'm saying that he walked out tonight and he saw everyone representing with the fireflies, and it got him thinking. You know I'm saying that sometimes your greatest foes can turn out to be your greatest helpers. So he you know ended up saying that him and Bray Wyatt went through hell, and they did everything imaginable to him. Of course, they had, you know, the pitch black uh, match at the Royal Rumble. Uh, this year, uh, Ellie Knight and Bray Wyatt. So, Ellie Knight ended up saying through that, he was getting him ready for anything. Ellie Knight ended up saying that he will be honest. He held himself together well tonight until he saw pictures of Bray's family because his heart breaks for that. He ended up saying as he looks around tonight, he can hear it and see it. He ended up saying that he knows they can all feel the spirit of Bray Wyatt in the building. So fans were chanting, thank you, Bray. Ellie Knight ended up saying that he won't come out and pretend like they were best friends. But he will say, thank you, Bray. He ended up saying, just like they feel the spirit, it's the same spirit that allows him to say, let me talk to you. So Ellie and I end up saying that The Miz gets on the screen and talks to TMZ about how he is just a fad, how he is yesterday's news. So Knight end up telling Miz if he is a fad, he is okay with that because Miz never was. So Ellie and I end up saying that even when Miz has stunt double, he was the star, meaning Damian Sandow. You know, when Damian Sandow was, you know, with WWE, you know, and he was uh, the Miz's stunt double, very funny. And Damian Sandow was over being Miz's uh, stunt double, then Miz himself at that time. 
So now you end up saying that when Miz talks about his championship ring from 12 years ago, he was background news for The Rock and John Cena. So now you end up telling Miz anytime, anywhere, SmackDown, Raw, TMZ, he will show him once and for all whose game is it. Where everyone's saying L.A. Night, yeah. But now I'm saying one more thing. Miz, a wise man once told him, the next time you see me, run. Of course, you know, L.A. Knight paying tribute to Bray Wyatt there. You know, and Bray Wyatt used to go, run. But that was that. Pretty good uh, promo from L.A. Knight here. You know, just paying his tribute to Bray Wyatt. And then, you know, just going into talking about The Miz. And then, as uh, SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the main event. LA Knight versus Finn Balor. And this was a, a decent match here. So the match got underway. Knight ended up delivering a show of tackle onto Balor as Balor ended up rolling to the outside. Knight ended up slamming Balor's face into the commentary table several times. He ended up throwing uh, Balor back into the ring. Knight delivered a show of tackle, and he ended up going for the cover, and Balor kicked out. Knight then ended up climbing the second rope, but Balor ended up tripping uh, Knight up, and then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Knight was in control of the match. He ended up delivering neckbreaker to Balor. Knight ended up hitting Balor with a DDT. He went for the cover, and Balor kicked out. Knight then grabbed Balor by his legs, but Balor started kicking Knight away, and Balor ended up playing a Russian leg sweep to Knight. Balor then delivered a sling blade as he ended up going for a drop kick, but Knight ended up hitting uh, Balor with a clothesline. Knight then lifted Balor up, but Balor landed on his feet, and he tripped Knight up. Balor delivered a drop kick, and he climbed to the top rope. Balor ended up going for the coup de grace, but Knight moved out of the way, and Knight ended up hitting Balor with a power slam. Knight then ran the ropes, and he up landing an elbow drop to uh, Balor. So we had Knight end up going for the cover, and Balor kicked out. Knight ended up going for the uh, BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma, but Balor ended up reversing that. He ended up slamming Ellie Knight into the mat. So Balor ended up climbing the top rope. Knight ended up tripping Balor up. Knight ended up getting on the second rope, and Balor knocked him down. Knight then jumped onto the top rope, and he landed a superplex to Balor. So Knight ended up going for the BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma, and he ended up going for the cover, and there you go. LA Knight ended up winning the match. Post-match, Knight ended up celebrating on the ramp, and the lights ended up going out in the arena. So we saw smoke, you know, filing in, and Bray Wyatt's lantern was in the ring. And we got a pretty cool uh, visual shot of Bray Wyatt standing in the ring. So the fans were chanting, thank you, Bray. And they end up holding up uh, the cell phones. The fans end up holding up the cell phones with the flashlights. And SmackDown went off the air. But overall, it was a... A uh, decent match between uh, Knight and Balor here. And, you know, the final shot of uh, SmackDown with uh, Bray Wyatt's lantern in there. Thought that was a uh, pretty uh, good way to end the show and pay more tribute to Bray Wyatt there. Of course, Bray Wyatt's going to be known, you know, when, you know, he came out, you know, holding the lantern, you know, when he was part of the Wyatt family. And... You know, also, you know, when he came out for Extreme Rules last year, he ended up pulling up the lantern. So, the lantern signifies Bray Wyatt. 
So, but overall, pretty meh SmackDown it was. But like I said, it was not about the wrestling. It was paying tribute to both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt tonight. And that was all that mattered. Moving on to AW Rampage. Rampage was just a mid-show, in my opinion. And we had the International Championship on the line. Orange Cassidy defend the title against Aaron Solo you know, of QTV. We had QT Marshall, who is the AAA Latin American champion. He won it at uh, Triple Mania. He ended up taking on uh, Gravity, and the AAA Latin American Championship was on the line. We had Luchasaurus in action, and he ended up taking on uh, Ren Jones. And in the main event, we had Soraya and Tony Storm versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Hikaru Shida. And I think this was taped uh, last week. I think last week they were at the... Uh, the Rupp Arena, and I'm like, why are we getting this match when we're going to be seeing uh, all four of these women uh, competing in the four-way for the Women's Championship at All In on Sunday? It's like TK pulled a Vince McMahon and being like, oh, we're going to book this for Rampage, but we're going to give it to you again in a four-way match for the championship on the line at All In. It did not need to be on Rampage, this woman's match, this woman's tag team match. But overall, Rampage was just a mid-show, in my opinion. So Rampage opened up tonight with the International Championship on the line. Orange Cassidy defended the title against Aaron Solo. Aaron Solo was, of course, accompanied by Harley Cameron, of course, uh, Orange Cassidy ended up coming out first, and then Aaron Solo and Harley Cameron came out. Harley Cameron did her, you know, performance awful, of course, absolutely awful. So the match itself, it was a, a decent match here. So the match ended up starting with Orange Cassidy. He was looking to put his hands in his pocket. But Aaron Solo ended up stopping Cassidy with a kick to his midsection. And we had Cassidy and Solo going back and forth. And Cassidy ended up delivering an arm drag that sent Solo crashing to the outside. Orange Cassidy then followed uh, Solo to the outside. Cassidy ended up hitting a back elbow. He was looking to uh, take another shot at uh, Aaron Solo. But Harley Cameron ended up getting in between uh, Solo and Cassidy. Cassie then delivered his signature kicks to uh, Harley Cameron. And then we had uh, Orange Cassie end up delivering a tope suicida to Aaron Solo. He ended up getting uh, Solo back into the ring. So Cassie ended up ascending to the top, but Harley Cameron ended up pulling Cassie down. And Aaron Solo delivered a suplex to uh, Orange Cassidy. And so Rampage went to commercial. Then when Rampage came back from the commercial, Aaron Solo ended up delivering a forearm in the corner to uh, Orange Cassidy. Cassidy ended up sending uh, Aaron Solo crashing into the top turnbuckles face first. So we had Orange Cassidy up ascending to the top. He delivered a cross body and a stun dog millionaire to Aaron Solo. And then Cassidy ended up following that up with a tornado DT to Solo. Orange Cassidy ended up sending up for the orange punch. And so Harley Cameron got on the mic and she distracted Orange Cassidy with a song saying, oh, Orange Cassidy, you know, going for Orange Punch or something like that. Or some shit like that. Who cares? It was absolutely awful. I'm like, get the mic away from Harley Cameron, please. And that allowed Aaron Solo to deliver a corkscrew kick to uh, Orange Cassidy. And he ended up planning Orange Cassidy's shoulder first. We had uh, Aaron Solo end up ascending to the top. He delivered a double 
a stomp, a diving double stomp to uh, Orange Cassidy. So Harley Cameron was looking to hit Orange Cassidy with a boot, and the referee ended up catching uh, Harley Cameron, and that led to Aaron Solo grabbing the boot, and he ended up hitting Orange Cassidy with the boot, and then he ended up going for the cover, to which Cassidy ended up kicking out. Cassidy then delivered the orange punch to Aaron Solo. Cassidy ended up following up with the beach break to Aaron Solo. Cassidy ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Orange Cassidy ended up winning the match, retaining the international championship. Overall, this was a decent match here. And Orange Cassidy still continues to uh, not lose the international championship. So it's a good reign for Orange Cassidy as international champion. And then we had good old JR, Jim Ross. He was interviewing QT Marshall. JR ended up asking QT what's next for him. QT ended up telling uh, JR that it's time for him to get the respect he's earned. He ended up saying that he's not the one aligning himself with people like Cody Rhodes and Powerhouse Hobbs because they're the ones aligning themselves with him. Marshall ended up saying that he never complained about that assumption because he's a professional. He ended up saying that he was taught to be a good soldier so he can get opportunities. Then questions why people assume he gets chances as a result of his relationship with Tony Khan when he had to go to Mexico for a chance at championship gold. So then QT Marshall starts complaining about him not having his own action figure. He ended up saying that he will defend his AAA Latin American Championship with honor and prestige. So pretty much that was basically that. That was what QT Marshall had to say. And then we got QT Marshall versus the moonwalking luchador Gravity. And this was for the uh, AAA Latin American Championship. And Johnny TV was on commentary uh, during this match, he accompanied uh, QT Marshall. So before the match began, QT Marshall ended up grabbing a mic. He started mocking uh, Gravity. QT ended up telling Gravity that he should just leave. But Gravity ended up slapping uh, QT in his face. And then the match got in the way. Gravity delivered an arm drag off the ropes to QT. He landed a second uh, arm drag. And then he followed up with a drop kick that sent uh, that sent QT crashing out of the ring. Gravity ended up going flying over the top, and he leveled QT. So Gravity then got uh, QT back in the ring. He ascended to the top. QT ended up catching Gravity with a right hand in midair, and Gravity ended up landing at Tejeras. He ended up looking to go flying off the apron. But QT ended up catching Gravity and power bombed him onto the apron. You had Gravity end up delivering a pair of chops to QT as Rampage came back from the commercial. QT ended up sending uh, Gravity crashing to the mat with a right hand. And Gravity then responded with a Canadian Destroyer, which looked absolutely great. So Gravity followed up with a clothesline in the corner to QT. He was looking for a crossbody off the ropes, but QT ended up catching Gravity with a backbreaker and, you know, playing him. So we had QT end up sitting Gravity on the top rope. He was looking to go for the diamond cutter, but Gravity ended up fighting QT off. He then delivered a chop and an uppercut to QT. Gravity climbed up to the middle rope. He ended up getting QT up on his shoulders. And then Gravity delivered a modified fallaway slam to QT. So QT then fired back with a diamond cutter and he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. QT Marshall ended up winning the match, retaining the AAA Latin American Championship. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, this was just a meh match here. And then we had a video from the Dark Order, and they ended up saying that they are looking to rebuild with other angry and selfish people like them. So the Dark Order is going to start to rebuild themselves. 
And then we had Luchasaurus versus Ren Jones. This was a squash match here. Luchasaurus ended up winning the match. He delivered a lariat to Ren Jones. That was that. And then we had the main event. Soraya and Tony Storm versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Hikaru Shida. Women's tag team match. Now I'm like, did this really need to be on the show? We're seeing these four women go at it at All In in a four-way match for the Women's World Championship. So Tony Khan pulled the Vince McMahon here. We're like, oh, well, we're getting close to the pay-per-view. We're getting close to All In. Oh, let's book the four women in the four-way match in a tag team match. So, pretty much the match was just meh, in my opinion. So, we had Soraya and Tony Storm. They end up going after Sheeta and Baker. So, Hikaru Sheeta and Tony Storm started brawling on the outside. Britt Baker ended up delivering a sling blade to Soraya. Baker then ended up running the ropes. But Ruby So ended up grabbing uh, Baker's ankle from the outside. And Soraya ended up sending Baker into the top turnbuckle face first. Soraya then tagged in Tony Storm. Tony Storm ended up firing off some stomps to Britt Baker. And she ended up delivering a pair of chops to her. So she then ended up sending Britt Baker into the top turnbuckle face first. And followed up with an uppercut. So we had uh, Tony Storm end up delivering a suplex to Britt Baker. And then another chop. Soraya then fired off some knees from the apron. As Tony Storm distracted the ref, Tony Storm ended up delivering a hip attack that sended uh, Britt Baker crashing to the outside. Ruby Soho then got involved. She ended up firing off some right hands and some stomps. And Chris Statlander appeared out of nowhere. She ended up dragging Ruby Soho to the back on her shoulders. So then Rampage ended up going to commercial. Then when Rampage came back from the commercial... Saray and Tony Storm end up taking turns holding up the women's championship. Saray then wear down Britt Baker on the outside and dump Britt Baker back into the ring. Tony Storm ended up taking in and she ended up going back and forth with Britt Baker. And we had Baker and Tony Storm land several forearms. Britt Baker ended up managing to deliver, to deliver a neck breaker to Tony Storm. And Britt Baker ended up taking in to Carl Sheeta. Carl Shea started firing off some strikes on Tony Storm. She then delivered a running knee. She ended up getting Carl Shea up on her shoulders. So uh, she ended up sending Tony Storm crashing down to the mat. And she ended up su suplexing uh, Soraya on top of her, which Soraya was interfering. So Tony Storm ended up delivering a chop before Carl Shea ended up catching uh, Tony Storm with an insiguri. Tony Storm ended up catching Britt Baker with a German suplex. And Soraya then tagged in. Soraya then ended up chucking Britt Baker across the ring. Britt Baker officially ended up tagging in. So we had uh, Tony Storm and Soraya end up leveling Britt Baker with a double power bomb. So we had, at one point, Tony Storm end up spraying uh, Hikaru Shida in the face with the spray paint. And Hikaru Shida then accidentally hit Britt Baker with a forearm. And this opened uh, the door for Soraya to hit Britt Baker with the nightcap. So Soraya ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Soraya and Tony Storm ended up winning the match. Post-match, Soraya then grabbed the Women's World Championship. But Tony Storm was looking to grab it from Soraya. So Soraya and Tony Storm started arguing about who gets to hold the Women's World Championship. But then they decide to hold the title up together. So that was how Rampage went off the air. Overall, just a very mid Rampage this was, in my opinion. But anyways, that's it for my review of SmackDown and AW Rampage. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my previous video that I uploaded earlier today. Did my movie review of Gran Turismo. So check out that if you guys haven't seen it. And maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow for Collision. So see if I do a uh, AW Collision review. It is a tape show. So.
so. But if I do do a collision review tomorrow, you know, I'll see you then. Uh, not too sure if, got, if I'm going to be reviewing all in on Sunday. So, you know, but we'll see what happens. But anyways, you know, if I do a collision review tomorrow, I'll see you then. You know, if not, till next video, I'll see you all later.